31, welcome to section 9.2. Here's where we are going to look at a very specific type of sequence called arithmetic sequences. So we did sequences in general in section 9.1. We looked at explicit formulas and then recursive formulas. And now with these lists of numbers, these sequences that we're making that have a pattern, we're gonna look at a specific kind in section 9.2 called arithmetic. All right, and we're gonna explore all sorts of things about arithmetic sequences. And then when we get to 9.3, we're gonna talk about something called a geometric sequence. So arithmetic, and when we get to 9.3, geometric, there are two main types of sequences that you look at in math. They're by no means the only sequences, but they are so common that, that that's why we usually look at them. So by the end of this section, we should be able to find the common difference for an arithmetic sequence. We should be able to write the terms of an arithmetic sequence. And we should use either explicit formulas for an arithmetic sequence or a recursive formula for arithmetic sequences. So we've got all sorts of things we're gonna look at just through the lens of arithmetic sequences. So let's look at the definition for an arithmetic sequence. And then we're gonna pick up a couple of formulas in this section that work only for arithmetic sequences. And I really wanna stress that because as we start to move through the next few sections, you're gonna pick up formulas for an arithmetic sequence a geometric sequence, arithmetic series, and a geometric series. And with those four types, the two arithmetics and the two geometrics, and then you could also think of them as we have two sequences and two series formulas, you really wanna to start to separate, well, if I have an arithmetic sequence, I can use this formula. If I have a geometric sequence, I can use this formula. If I have an arithmetic series, that's a different word. Series, I can use this formula. Geometric series, I can use that formula. So we really wanna to start to compartmentalize what we can use when, right? Arithmetic sequence, geometric sequence, arithmetic series, geometric series. All right, so let's focus just on the sequence side of things. And again, when I say sequence, we're just gonna list the numbers. When we get to series, we are going to add the terms of the sequence. All right, I know that's a lot of, of um, like prelude, but let, let's get going. Let's learn about arithmetic sequences. So an arithmetic sequence, or sometimes called an arithmetic progression, is a sequence in which each term after the first term differed from the preceding term by a fixed constant called the common difference D. So when you're dealing with an arithmetic sequence, you're gonna see this letter pop up all over the place, D. And what an arithmetic sequence is, it's a list of numbers where as you go from A sub one to A sub two to A sub three, there's a common difference between those numbers. And whatever that difference is, it can be positive or negative, we're just gonna call it D. All right, so let me scooch this up and give you your first look at an arithmetic sequence. And all we need to do here is just find the value of D. So let me move this up and let's take a look at our arithmetic sequence. All right, so it says find the common difference D for the arithmetic sequence 20, 13, 6, negative 1, negative 8. All right, so whenever you want to find a common difference, look at the differences between these successive terms, right? So if you look, how do you go from 20 to 13 by either adding or subtracting a number? And again, we'll call it the common difference each time, just depends on if D is positive, you're adding to get from one term to the other. If D is negative, you're subtracting to get from one term to the other. So how does 20 differ from 13? How does 13 differ from six? How does six differ from negative one? And let's just remember what we picked up in 9.1, right? I know a sub one is equal to 20. I know a sub two is equal to 13. I know a sub three is equal to six, right? A sub four, negative one, and then down here, a sub eight, not a sub eight, excuse me, a sub five is negative eight. All right, so I've got, oops, let me move this up just a bit so we can see that. I've got the first five terms in my sequence given to me. Now, if you ever want to find the common difference, this is how you do it. You take D, right? Your difference would be A sub two minus A sub one. And you need to go more recent term minus the more past term, if you will. So recent to former, right? So we need to go A sub two minus A sub one. So in this case, that would be 13 minus 20, which is negative seven. I could also have found D if I went, I could have gone A sub three minus A sub two. So A sub three is a more current term, right? Because it comes after 
a sub 2. So you want to subtract, take your current term and subtract the preceding term. So in this case, I could have gone 6 minus 13, which is also negative 7. Right? So I don't care how you're getting through this. Ultimately, d in this case, it's negative 7. It's specifically negative because I'm losing 7 each time I go through, uh, excuse me, each time I go from one term to the next. And just another way of saying this is each term is 7 less than the previous term. So let me just write this out in words. Each term is 7 less than the previous term. And that's all there is to finding this common difference. Take your more recent term, subtract the preceding term, okay? So with that, let's go ahead and move forward. And now instead of finding D, let's find the numbers or the, yeah, the different terms in the sequence and see what kind of pattern we can follow if we are given D. All right, I'll see you in a few. Bye.